What's cracking guys, Omar Esau here, back with another video. In this video today, I'm talking about everybody's favorite topic, steroids. Bryce, I gotta get bigger, man. Yeah, this might help. Steroids. Steroids. What is going on with you? God damn it! But I'm gonna make it positive. I wanna talk about a new twist, uh, answering the question, how much more muscle can you build while using steroids. Uh, but I also want to give some positivity. I want to give realistic expectations for naturals out there by giving you context, numbers, images about what you can hope to achieve as well as strength goals. I made a video before on that topic, the realistic part for naturals, but I didn't give kind of concrete numbers to aim towards. So really, this one's focusing more on positivity and trying to bring it all the way in. Keep in mind, I'm not pro or condoning the use of steroids. I'm just trying to provide context for a lot of people out there when they ask like, oh, like this guy's on steroids or this guy, like that's why he's so strong. And I kind of, I see both sides. And what I mean, I think people when they always say, well, he's on steroids, like that's really easy for him to do. I think they overestimate how much they get from it. And at the same time, I think people underestimate how many people are actually using. So I see both sides once again. What I want to talk about before I go on first Huge shout out to my boy, Greg Knuckles, who has a few phenomenal articles on this topic going in, and I mean in, all the way in, uh, on the research when it comes to steroids, what you can achieve, naturals, uh, fat-free mass index, all the research, all the mathematics, all of them, I'm going to link that in the description. But let's talk now about the topic, and this is a long one, so sit your ass down. Um, the first question is how do we measure how jacked someone is? And that is we use something called the fat-free mass index, which takes into account your height, your weight, and your body fat percentage to give you a number. Now this number is a rough indicator of how jacked you are. And what's really cool, researchers have looked at those that have never lifted in their life, they don't even lift, they've looked at people that are natural, that have lifted for a long time to give a a rough estimate of how much you could build uh, while being natural and they've also looked at enhanced individuals those that are using some sort of performance enhancing drug at their fat free mass index check this out so on average keep in mind there's what's called standard deviations which means that not everyone's going to conform to this most people are somewhere roughly around their right they can be further away so their fat free mass index which i'm going to link in the description you could check out for yourself where you are currently keep in mind do not underestimate your body fat percentage most people do um i've been guilty of that before but when they measured those that first started lifting or did not lift at that point sedentary individuals they found on average is somewhere along the lines of 18.9 is where they started out and if i put in my numbers uh for a lot of these you can't put in like five nine and three quarters so i ran it up to 510 uh 510 and i started at 140 pounds before i started lifting and body fat percentage was around maybe 12 13 or 14 percent body fat I started below the average, which is actually pretty interesting. And I think, once again, that's something cool, trying to spread that positivity. Where you start out doesn't accurately predict how much muscle that you can build. Second point, so they took a look at sedentary individuals. Cool, 18.9. Now, they also took a look at those that had been lifting for a while, and they measured their muscle mass, or their fat-free mass index, how jacked they were. And they found that, on average, it was 22.3, their fat-free mass index. Once again, that's not a natural hard limit. That's, on average, what they observed, which means for everyone out there, like pretty damn much everyone out there, uh, I would say over 90% uh, of you, you can definitely achieve a 22.3. And what's interesting about this is keep in mind, like I said before, that's most people, what they can definitely achieve. There are a lot of naturals that will definitely exceed that using examples from times past where we could 100% say they're natural for sure. Why? Because steroids honestly weren't invented at that time. Guys like Eugene Sandow and a bunch of others, they have a fat free mass index beyond 22, 23, 24. Of course, there is a natural limit, but my point is that for most people out there, they can exceed 22.3. That is a good uh, statement I feel confident in. Myself, when we measure that fat-free mass index, uh, it works out to uh, 176 pounds at 5'10", I have to put in, and at around between 10 to 12% body fat, I have between a 22.3 and a 22.8 or 0.9, uh, depending upon that body fat percentage. As you can see, there's quite a large range. And that's pretty cool, because that means, I think, just showing some of the photos, most of you out here, and I mean most of you, I don't want to say all of you because once again, there are outliers, will definitely be able to achieve a physique like this. And like I said before, this isn't even my final form. I can definitely build more muscle. This is just taking the average or giving you like a number that people achieved. 
Um, what's interesting on the other hand, however, is that when we took a look or when they took a look at those that were enhanced, their on average number was 25, over 25 actually. And what happens actually, there are people that respond more to steroids, people that respond less. Um, and also these people, I don't think they're maxing out on their total steroid uh, usage, but once again, on average, they're at over 25 and there's people standard deviations that were well beyond that, which means translating this to just numbers of like muscle mass that you could put on, those that were enhanced put on at least 20 more pounds of lean muscle mass than those that were natural. The same, not the exact same people, but basically the same people, roughly genetic makeup, let's say potential that they had. So those that were natural, were at around 22.3, those that were enhanced were over 25. And so that means that a natural individual, you know, you could build at least 20, uh, 30 pounds of lean muscle mass. Those that were enhanced built an additional at least 20 pounds of lean muscle mass. And that's not even keeping into account genetic freaks that respond really well. I think on the upper end of the standard deviations, they were over 30, uh, maybe even 35 pounds of more lean muscle mass that they built uh, on top of that. And that's huge when you think about it, right? If I was to tell you, oh yeah, you could do this, you do this natural, like do your thing, man. Uh, you build whatever, 25 pounds of extra lean muscle mass or 30 pounds, but you could also build an additional at least 20 pounds um, if you're enhanced. That's a huge range. And that's why we see when it comes to bodybuilding, aesthetics, a lot of different uh, variables, why it is such a huge advantage to everyone out there. And again, that's your choice, that's what you do. Me, this channel, we talk about keeping it natty, team no cash for life. Uh, that's my perspective, but again, I understand all sides. So that's why when I talk about a lot of people maybe being, not insincere, but where that temptation can come from is that you see all those extra essentially uh, gains or muscle that could be built, it's quite large. It doesn't provide a small boost, it provides actually a really big boost, almost double the amount of muscle that you can build. Okay, so that's muscle mass. now. Let's talk about strength, and this is where it gets interesting, and this is kind of where the return of the Natty Heakins uh, comes in, and that is because strength is pretty damn dependent when you we take a look at the numbers on your total amount of muscle mass, and so what actually happens is because steroids help build more muscle mass, in a way it doesn't enhance as much your relative body strength. Uh, sure, it can help make you leaner, stay leaner, uh, maybe five percent, something like that but on average it helps you build more muscle. So if you're already lean competing at a certain weight class, you're not gonna get a huge advantage. The same advantage that people are afforded when it comes to building total muscle mass where essentially they just get more jacked and increasing their absolute strength, that could totally occur. But relative strength wouldn't be nearly as high and that's where I think people get it ultimately twisted where they think, oh, like of course he can lift this way, like he's on. It's like, well, there's also years and years and years of hard work good genetics, uh, a bunch of different variables like that. Because taking a look once again at the statistics, you can get maybe relative strength, 7% to maybe uh, above 10%, maybe if that, an increase in your strength performance when you're on PED. So that's completely different. And I think that's actually cool, right? There's a distinct difference that occurs between those if your goal is just to add more and more muscle mass and those that want to compete at that same body weight. So once again, it's because strength is pretty damn dependent on muscle mass. When you're enhanced, you build essentially more muscle mass. Yes, you can also get leaner. That's what essentially the relative strength advantage is, but it's not nearly as high as people think. So I'm gonna link all this in the description. But the point I want to make in this video, I think there's, I think there's a lot to live for. Actually, using Greg's um, numbers that he broke down on that article, what's very cool using the estimates by some of the studies. Actually, uh, the total that they put for someone that currently is my weight and my height, my strength potential, what I can achieve, would be over a 1,600 pound total. And so right now, when it comes to strength, I'm at like 14 something for the total of my lifts. Like my best lifts would be, you know. Like maybe a 500 pound squat, I could, uh, I feel I could muster, work on a 600 pound deadlift, a three something bench. So I actually got a lot of room to grow. That's my current potential. So when I say this isn't even your final form, that's what I mean. So I just want to say to everyone out there, I wanted to give you some realistic expectations. I wanted to provide context. I wanted to show you why 
well, yeah, when it comes to muscle mass, it could be a huge advantage, and that's why I think keeping this industry honest, sincere, is very important, but also I think it's cool that it shows when it comes to strength, that advantage isn't nearly as pronounced when we talk about a relative strength perspective. So once again, for me, taking a look at the numbers, there's a lot of room for me to grow, both when it comes to muscle mass and my strength. It's not even my final form, that is the video guys. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like the video, make sure to like the damn video. I'm boiling with these two lights right in front of me. Last thing I wanted to say, uh, if you guys remember my pre-workout that I came out with, Singularity, where you could pre-order it, there's only one day left. We're selling it, it's super affordable. Remember, it's no frills, transparent, $25. There's less than 24 hours, and then we won't be taking any more pre-orders until it's made in 2017. So if you've been looking uh, for something that's evidence-based, that actually has the properly dosed ingredients, no bullshit, no frills, check it out. Link is in the description, and I'll be seeing all you guys, my rascals, in that next video. Peace.